If you're excited to use VMware Power CLI commandlets to automate your vSphere infrastructure, then you've got to watch this video. Before you can run Power CLI commandlets like these, you've got to install Power CLI. So that's what we're going to talk about in the lab environment. To get started, let's go to developer.broadcom.com. And as you can see, there's loads of resources here, but we want to go specifically to the section for Power CLI. When we go there, you'll notice that there's a button right here labeled View Installation Guide. So let's go there. On this page, it gives a brief description of what Power CLI is. Uh, if you haven't seen the previous video, take a look at it. It'll explain more about Power CLI. Next, it says, all right, uh, there's a prerequisite here. Uh, Power CLI is built on top of PowerShell, and you need to have at least version 5.1. Continuing on here, the next section describes what is PowerShell. Notice that you can use Power CLI on different operating systems. You can use it on top of Windows, Linux, or Mac OS. The trick here is that while Windows has PowerShell installed by default, Linux and Mac OS don't. You can click on the Linux button to go to the link that shows you how to install PowerShell in Linux environments. And similarly for the Mac OS button, you can click here. My machine is running Windows, so I'm gonna go back over to Windows and let's continue onwards. All right, step number one is to install PowerCLI. Now you'll notice here that we have instructions on how you can easily install PowerCLI online. Uh, you may have noticed me using this exact technique in a previous video. So in that previous video, I used install-module-name vmware.powercli. And just like that, I got VMware PowerCLI installed. And you can too. At least you can as long as you've got a connection to the internet. But what if you don't have a connection to the internet? What if your environment is air gap? Well, in that case, as you can see, we also have instructions on how you can install PowerCLI in an offline manner. So the steps involved there would be to download the .zip file, which you can get by clicking on this link here. The next thing that you need to do is figure out where to install the files from that zip file. Uh, so to find that out, if you do $env colon PS module path, that will give a list of one or more folders in your Windows system uh, where PowerShell is looking for modules. So run that command to find out where they are. In step three, you're going to extract the zip file into one of those folders. Then in step four, you need to unblock the files that we just extracted. As you can see, the way to do that is you change directories to the folder where you place the files. Then you run git dash children, asterisk dash recurse, pipe sign, unblock dash file and that will unblock the files. Then continuing onwards, the next step will be to verify that the PowerCLI module is in fact available in your system. If all has gone well, you can run git-module-name VMware PowerCLI-list available and you should see PowerCLI listed, in which case you're ready to start using PowerCLI. So let's continue on to step two. In step two, it points out that uh, if you click on this handy dandy button here, you will be taken to a, a page uh, that links to multiple pages that document all sorts of different Power CLI commandlets. So whether you want to use Power CLI commandlets to interface with your vSphere environment or your vSAN environment or your SRM environment or RE operations or any of the other platforms that PowerShell supports, you can click on this button to find out about the commandlets that enable you to automate those environments. All right, continuing onwards here, uh, at the very tail end, as you can see, we've got information about how you can update PowerCLI. VMware updates PowerCLI periodically, so you can run this command to stay up to date. So it's simply update-module-name VMware.PowerCLI. Now, as an added bonus, I'd like to show you a little snippet of code that you might find useful in your upcoming PowerCLI scripts. So let's take a look. This is actually a snippet of code that I've shown in a previous video. If you haven't seen this code just yet, don't worry. We're going to be talking about it in detail in an upcoming video. If you take a look at lines one through four, you can see a snippet of code that will enable your PowerShell script to confirm that PowerCLI is in fact installed. 
if PowerCLI is not installed, you're not going to be able to run the PowerCLI commandlet. So if not git dash module dash name VMware dot PowerCLI, uh, that, that is the test that you can use to easily check to see whether or not PowerCLI is in fact installed. All right, now you know how to install PowerCLI. Why don't you go head off and install it in your environment? And when you're done installing PowerCLI, perhaps you want to click this button so that you can learn about the various commandlets, such as these, that you can use to automate your VMware environment. If you try to run these commandlets, but they don't seem to be working, never fear. You're probably just forgetting to do something very simple. And we're gonna talk about exactly what that is in the next video.